when my uh, three-year-old grandson comes up, hugs me around the knees and says, I love you, Grandpa, I would not have had that experience 100 years ago when the average lifespan of America was 47 years old. So when you talk about carbon-based energy, you are talking about life. You are talking about your life and my life because without that kind of energy, we wouldn't have it. Are we going? Now, I want to end optimistically here. Uh, are we going to have new energies, different non-carbon-based energies? Yes, I think so. Our initiative, you know, this country is built on innovation and initiative and so on, and we are able to do that because we have the freedom to question and ask and, and, and pull the curtain back on, on assertions that certain people make and, and agendas they might have. So I'm very optimistic that um, some energy thing will be cracked. I don't know what it is. Maybe it will be nuclear. Maybe it will be fusion-based nuclear power or whatnot. But that uh, we will decarbonize our energy supply in the next 100 years, just like we dehorsified transportation in the last 100 years. When you think about it, burning coal is kind of 19th century, you know. And so, you know, turning uh, energy into electricity and the more higher functions of energy are going to be quite good and, uh, and, and progressive. And I'm optimistic. Normally, people like me aren't optimistic about biofuels, but, but uh, Schles Dr. Schlesinger was correct that in the southeast, we can turn carbon dioxide and sunlight and water into stuff, you know, in, into biomass. And um, with, kind of, with the initiatives I've seen going on in Alabama, and certainly they would apply to the southeast in general, we can create a lot of renewable biomass if we can just crack the cost a little bit more. It's not going to take too much more. But, uh, and a few other problems uh, that can be handled, I think. But uh, biomass, I think, is an optimistic way to end, uh, as well as the alternatives that will come because they are affordable. If you make energy expensive, then you're hurting yourself. But come up with those affordable alternatives, and we all win, I think. Okay, folks, uh, so now uh, if you would just pass any questions that you have on those index cards, pass them to uh, the center aisles and there'll be people around to pick those up. And also remind you about those surveys. Uh, if you would, please uh, fill, fill those out so we can get a sense of how this event went and also about how influential these uh, two uh, really fantastic scientists have been in elucidating this, uh, this topic for us. So uh, we'll take about a five minutes to uh, collect your questions and uh, then we'll, we'll get started again. Okay, so uh, some of these questions are just sort of general, others are directed at uh, particular uh, speakers. So uh, uh, Dr. Christie, uh, why do the models fail? A model is a set of rules. If you've written computer code, you know what I'm talking about. It turns out those rules don't explain or, or quantify the way the real world works. It's very complicated. And, uh, and, and so that, that's, I suppose, is a simple answer. It's such a complicated system that the rules that are in these climate models do not express reality uh, well enough to uh, make these kind of forecasting projections. Dr. Schlesinger, of the uh, 2,500 members of the IPCC, how many are climate scientists, not political scientists, economists, sociologists, or other? <laughs> there's, actually, there's a huge range of different disciplines represented there. I, I, I'm going to have to give you a guess um, that something on the order of 20 percent have some dealing with climate. Uh, Dr. Christie, at what point in time will we know which one of you or Dr. Schlesinger is right? And if we are wrong, will we have time to try to counteract global warming in order to maintain biodiversity? Okay, that question goes all over the place. I'll right. just say this. I, I need a quantitative test uh, that, that's mentioned here. Right or wrong doesn't cut it in a, in a scientific thing. Uh, when will climate models reproduce the actual temperature rise we see and give some kind of sense of whether they're right, I suppose that would be, when, when they are consistent with the observations. Okay, do the, do the climate models get any of it right? Um, well, they get the fact it's warmer in summer and cooler in winter real well. <laughs> they, um, you know, they get 
the, the growth systems like jet streams, uh, correct, and the broad areas of rainfall that occur therein, where the deserts are and so on, you would never use a climate model for a regional projection, though. Even the IPCC says that. that like the Southeast US, you would never use a climate model to tell you. I'll just tell you a simple story. The National Academy, or, or someone, did use two climate models. One had the Southeast turned into a jungle, and one had it turning into a semi-arid plain. So uh, there, we've got a lot of work to do. So in modeling circles, is, is the goal really to be able to predict using models and, and as you say, go back and test it with a hypothesis? And are there any modelers who realistically think at some point they will get it right? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a pretty hard question in the sense that climate modelers have this huge pressure on them to tell us what's going to happen in the future. At the same time, they're trying to express fundamental rules of the atmosphere with very crude rules of, of, of the climate model constraint. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think they would not, they'd rather not have that pressure, that they want to be able just to explain what we see in the atmosphere today rather than have that projection uh, placed on their shoulders. Right. Okay. Uh, would the increase in pollen not increase the potential of pines to produce more uh, wilt warming? Karen, am I getting that right? Wilt, wilt warming? Wilt warming. Oh, uh, it's got to be something else. Something else. <laughs> okay. I thought I knew who asked that question, but. Would the increase of the pine pollen not increase the possibility of the pine tree producing more pollen to be more Right. Okay. Right. Is, not, is the pollen not going to improve the biology of the pines? Uh, it could potentially increase seed production, um, but uh, you know you've got to overlay that then on the situation that those seeds, where those seeds will fall, and and the climate that they will experience. Um, if you look at that map of forest cover of the southeastern U.S., pine is predicted widely uh, to not be the most productive, and and not even occur in many areas that it occurs today. For somewhere else, yeah. Uh, there is suspicion that the government plans to institute a tax on cattle due to their ability to increase methane gas in the atmosphere. Uh, bathrooms over there. Uh, is this true, and is it reasonable? And that's to uh, either of our speakers. My. Uh, Roommate in college will be incorporated in that tax as well. <laughs> uh, you know, methane, cows generate methane, and methane is a, is a more powerful greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. There's a number of people that suggested that we could actually institute policies for methane and nitrous oxide, uh, perhaps easier than carbon dioxide. I would say all for it. Let's, let's, get the most bang for our buck on these kinds of things. Um, but certainly in a full greenhouse gas accord where we were trying to uh, reduce the country's total impact on climate, if a country vastly increased its herd of beef cattle, you'd want to have some kind of acknowledgement of that in terms of, of penalty or carbon tax to, to, uh, to make up for it. How confident are we that we really understand where all the methane comes from on the planet? I think budget is pretty well balanced. There's roughly 500 teragrams uh, produced and consumed every year, somewhere between 500 and 550. So uh, we can balance it fairly accurately within about 10 percent. It has a lifetime of 12 years in the atmosphere. Um, it is not as well known as carbon dioxide, but it's, it's, that's a sophisticated science. 